Hey, welcome back to Well.com, home of Tig Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and uh, we're in this uh, aircraft hangar welding up parts, and I happen to have a couple of machines here. And when I say a couple of machines, they're both TIG machines. I've got one of them that's an industrial TIG machine. And it's one that you've seen me use at the track. You've seen me use it all over. In fact, it was one of my favorite machines. It's no longer on the market, but I still want to talk about it. So if you were to go out and find one of these machines, uh, they're heavy duty. So if you hear the term industrial, there's a reason why it's industrial. It means that this machine has been tested, it's had side load impacts, it's been dropped, it's had environmental tests, salt spray tests. It is heavy duty and it's designed to weld numerous parts in a row. Sometimes you hear that as duty cycle. I don't trust anybody's duty cycle. When they tell you that they have this duty cycle, the only way to test it is to take the machine and just weld the heck out of it. And I have. So this machine right here, it's called a V205. It's an AC-DC machine made by Lincoln Electric. Fantastic machine, no longer available. The price tag, last time that I checked on this, was about $3,900. So if you're into full-time business, you want an industrial machine. But if you happen to be the guy that's in his shop doing uh, you know, hot rods and things like that, maybe you're building some kind of a chopper or fixing aircraft, Everything is light duty or relatively light duty, so you don't need the full 205 amps at 60% duty cycle. What you need is something lighter, and you also want something a lighter price tag. So just know that those are available. I'm going to weld with two different machines. I have another machine over here. I call it the Mr. Tig machine only because I've tested it, and it, it performs equal to this machine here. So why in the world wouldn't I just buy this machine? It's light duty. It runs off 115 volts only, but it'll give you about 125 amps, plus or minus, depending where you're at. Yeah, so we're gonna take some 16 gauge aluminum, and I'm gonna weld with the industrial machine, then I'm gonna weld with this economical machine. Uh, sometimes you'll hear the term utility, and let you compare and see the difference. So if you're wanting a, a lower price machine, It'll just do a few parts. You're not going to do production with this machine, so don't compare the two. But this machine has a substantial price point less, and it's less than $1,000. How much less? I don't know, $8.95, something like that. But it's ACDC. It's almost unheard of. So uh, let's run the, uh, the test on the two and see if you can tell the difference. All right, now I've got my industrial machine set up. It's got a lot of features on it. Uh, I don't have pulse on, but I have a higher frequency. It's not 60 hertz. I like running at about 115, 120 hertz. So you'll hear kind of a, a bumblebee sound. It stabilizes the arc, and the higher I turn that knob, the tighter the arc gets. Again, I'm doing a 16 gauge aluminum, a lap weld. Um, I'm going to run somewhere in the 60, 60 amp range, and I'm going to have my guys watch and tell me uh, later on what I was running at. Anyway, so I've got argon 15 to 20 CFH. I've just got a little 1 16th tungsten in here. Uh, so I'm going to run a couple of inches and, uh, and let you look at it. Now the cleaning action on this, you can adjust the cleaning action. I've got this thing set on 70% negative meaning I've got 30% cleaning going on. And that seems to be about the right mean. Okay, now I did a fillet weld or a lap weld, if you will, uh, dab filler. I've got 53, 56, so I'm just, uh, I'm just playing right now. But I want to really show the cleaning or lack of cleaning action, and you can do that by just doing a bead-on plate. I'm going to run a bead-on plate right next to that lap weld. Then we'll compare the two machines and see if you see any difference.
Okay, you can see right at the end, as I taper off back off on amperage, I add just a little extra filler because that's where cracking is typically going to form. Uh, so just get into a good habit of doing that. Okay, now I've got my Lincoln V205 set at 70% negative, 30% cleaning. And if you notice in the heat affected zone, there's hardly any frost or any cleaning action. You can just lightly see it. So most of the time, that is okay. It depends how dirty your metal is. If you have dirtier metal, you're gonna to have to change the cleaning action to give it more. So you may jump to 65% negative or, or even less. So just know that that is a good starting point. Okay, now I'm gonna shift over and I'm gonna to go to my utility machine or light duty machine, if you will. You can call it whatever you want, but see how it performs. Okay, now I've set up my uh, little Mr. Tig approved machine. Uh, got it set up at 80 amps and that's what I set the industrial machine up at. I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a lap or fillet well, if you will. Do exactly the same thing using the same filler, gases, tungsten. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a bead on plate so you can get a real good picture of the cleaning action. Then I'm gonna let you compare. Okay, now I, I set this machine up and I set it somewhat comparable to my heavy duty machine. Uh, it was a little bit off on the cleaning action, but overall <clears throat> you'll see that the results are pretty good. Yeah, I was running a 10 amp circuit on 110 and I tripped it. So uh, I had to reset it and you'll see a, a little irregularity in the weld here. So uh, uh, my bad. Anyway, uh, went ahead and made this weld and then I went to the side of it and it made a bead on plate. So now what I want you to do is just compare the two welds. And, and first of all, after you've taken the evaluation, you say, well, gosh, I can't see a huge difference. There is a difference between the machines. Uh, industrial machines are extremely precise when you back off on amperage. Uh, you can see just little subtleties that they're better. Uh, this machine is, is good. I'd, I'd, I'd categorize it good to great in this category. And it's again, it's under $1,000. So it does everything that I wanted to do. Now, another thing is uh, I'm, I'm hoping somewhere along the way that some of these manufacturers that make a welding rod, we use 36 inch length. And if you get the skills and you have the ability to add the full length of this rod, you can make some pretty long welds. But you know, most of your welds aren't very long at all. And I'm hoping that somebody will come out, instead of me having to cut this in half, they're gonna come out with some 18 inch cut links. So there's my challenge to you. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just tripped a breaker. Oh. Are you want to explain this? I'm going to the bottom world for. Okay. Okay, you can see that the cleaning action on the industrial machine just very, very light. And now as we scan up to the utility machine, it's uh, it seems to have a little bit more cleaning, but not much. They're they're pretty similar in many ways.
both clean, both wetted out very nicely. Width is the same. They each had their own little unique sound, though. So the, the challenge to you is, if, if you didn't know which machine did which weld,